Ah, wood rot, one of the oldest enemies of civilization. From medieval castles to humble farmhouses, from sturdy bridges to the hulls of mighty ships, moisture and decay have claimed countless structures over the centuries. Today, we rely heavily on chemical sealants, preservatives, and synthetic coatings. Yet, many of these modern solutions fail far sooner than anyone might expect. Remarkably, medieval craftsmen had a method to halt wood rot in its tracks, one that required no synthetic chemicals, no laboratory formulas, just a blend of keen observation, fire, and natural oils. This approach, you see, allowed beams, ship planks, and structural supports to survive decades of harsh weather. So why has this method fallen out of modern practice, despite its proven effectiveness? It's quite the puzzle, isn't it? Understanding this ancient technique gives us insight not only into history, but also into practical preservation techniques that anyone can use today. It's a fascinating bridge between the past and the future, wouldn't you say? The genius of medieval carpenters was in their understanding of wood as a living material. They knew that moisture trapped inside timber accelerates decay, that fungi and insects feed on sugars in untreated wood, and that surface coatings alone often fail to protect the inner structure. Over centuries, they experimented with controlled charring, careful drying, and oil treatments to create wood that could endure damp climates, storms, and even occasional flooding. This knowledge, passed down through apprenticeships and guilds, ensured that medieval structures lasted far longer than most modern timber buildings without constant maintenance. The method worked by combining fire, time, and natural oils. The first step was controlled charring. Medieval craftsmen carefully exposed timber to flame, blackening the surface without burning it away. This carbon layer created a natural shield, repelling water and discouraging fungi and insects. Unlike modern synthetic coatings that sit on the surface and can peel or crack, this charred layer became an integral part of the wood, providing protection that would last decades. Shipbuilders in northern Europe used this technique extensively treating hull planks and frames to resist seawater, while bridge builders applied it to timbers spanning rivers prone to flooding. Drying was equally important. Freshly cut wood contains high levels of moisture, which accelerates rot from the inside out. Medieval carpenters would air-dry timber for months or even years, depending on its size and intended use. You see, dry wood is just much less hospitable to decay organisms, and it really allows the protective charred layer and oils to work effectively. Modern sealants, well, they can't reverse internal moisture damage, which is exactly why untreated or poorly dried timber so often fails, even after a surface treatment. Finally, oils such as linseed walnut or pine resin were applied to penetrate the wood fibres, sealing those tiny microscopic pores and, you know, enhancing the moisture resistance created by charring. This step also maintained flexibility, which helped prevent cracking that could expose untreated wood. By combining these three steps, medieval craftsmen managed to create timber that was resilient, long-lasting, and really resistant to the primary agents of decay. Historical examples prove this method worked exceptionally well. Archaeological evidence from Europe supports the effectiveness of this technique.
Excavations in Scandinavian shipyards, including Viking and medieval sites, reveal charred planks treated with oils that are still remarkably intact after hundreds of years. Timber frames in medieval churches and houses show similar evidence, often surviving centuries of weather with minimal maintenance. Researchers note that these treated timbers outlast modern chemically coated wood in comparable conditions, demonstrating that practical observation and natural materials can outperform modern synthetic approaches. Even today, traditional boat builders in Scandinavia use charred and oiled planks to construct vessels that endure salt water and harsh storms far longer than those treated solely with synthetic sealants. It's quite fascinating, really, how these age-old methods continue to stand the test of time. Raised garden beds, fence posts, and outdoor furniture also benefit from this approach, extending lifespan without toxic chemicals. It's amazing to see how versatile and environmentally friendly this technique can be. To replicate the technique, start with quality wood, ideally straight-grained and free of major knots. Allow the timber to dry completely in a well-ventilated area. For charring, use a controlled flame, such as a propane torch or low open fire, to blacken the surface evenly, taking care not to burn too deeply. It's a delicate balance, but with a bit of practice you can achieve remarkable results. Once cooled, Apply natural oils like linseed or pine resin. Rub the oil into the wood thoroughly, repeating the process over several days for deep penetration. For outdoor or high moisture applications, ensure every exposed surface is treated, including ends and joints where rot commonly begins. This method works for anything from raised beds and fencing to tool handles and small shelters. Even partial treatments, such as charring and oiling just the ends of posts, provide disproportionate protection against decay. For survivalists, reenactors, and craftsmen, this is a sustainable, low-tech solution that connects modern practice directly to centuries of proven wisdom. Modern industry has largely abandoned these natural methods in favour of synthetic coatings and chemical preservatives. While convenient, these approaches often fail over time and can be harmful to the environment. By revisiting medieval practices, we gain access to a proven, sustainable way to extend the life of wood while minimizing chemical exposure. This method also empowers craftspeople, historians, and survivalists to work with the material in a way that respects both its natural properties and centuries of tradition. If you found this guide useful and want to explore more historical techniques that are both practical and sustainable, subscribe to Echoes of Valor. Share this video with friends, fellow history enthusiasts, and anyone interested in preserving wood the way medieval craftsmen did. By reviving these ancient methods, we not only honour the ingenuity of our ancestors, but also create structures that endure far longer than modern materials often allow.